Well, welcome once again to Let's Talk About It. I am your host, Candy Tunsto, and today our it is being alone. I want to let you know today that it is okay to be alone. And my guest today is me, myself, and I. <laughs> um, so before we get started, I want to um, let you know um, how I came to... I had another word today, um, but my guest canceled. So um, God led me to go on with the word about being alone. And um, I want to let you know that it is okay to be alone. And God gave me that. I woke up this morning. I didn't want I, I like to make myself vulnerable, um, as you hear me say quite often. Um, so I woke up this morning, and I said, God, I don't have a guest to be on the show this morning. And, and I wanted to call and cancel. I was just sharing it with um, Larry that I wanted to cancel, and the Holy Spirit just wouldn't let me cancel. And the reason I wanted to cancel was because I didn't want to do the show alone today, but God led me to go ahead and do it. And he said, I want you to talk about being alone. And so I'm going to do just that. I want to let you know that if you are alone, if you are feeling alone, that it is okay to be alone sometime. And um, a lot of us out there, we're lonely. We're um We've been we we uh, we've been left alone um, through different circumstances and situations in our life. Whether uh, we've lost a loved one, or um, maybe in a marriage you, you you're divorced, or just anything. Um, so we we find ourselves alone sometime. And um, I know for me, there was a time in my life when I didn't like being alone. But what I learned about being alone, what what I learned that being alone does for me did for me was it helped me to get in touch with who I am to find out who Candy really was and um, just learn myself. And with that being said, I, I, I went, I would, when I would sit alone, a lot of times I would just ponder upon different things, many thoughts, what I wanted to do, how I wanted to do it. And I would ask myself, why am I alone? But I found out that being alone was not a bad thing. It's really a good thing. But I also really found out that, I also found out that, I was really never alone. So even though we feel alone, we're really never alone. So be okay being by yourself sometimes. And sometimes you can be alone in the room full of people. You can be alone even in the midst of family, uh, family gatherings. You can be around a lot of people, and, and you can find yourself alone. And I said today, my, my guest, I was kidding when I said my guest is me, myself, and I, but the truth be told, I am my own guest. I want to let you know a little bit about my, myself today. And, well, I grew up with, um, in a family of 10, five sisters and four brothers. Um, there were 10 of us. We, we grew up with, in a house with both parents. And um, I am the seventh child out of 10 children. I had three older sisters and three older, older brothers. Um, some of them have gone on to be with the Lord. But being the seventh child, you know how the saying goes, the middle child is kind of left out a little bit. Well, I was in the middle of the middle. Um, being the seventh child, I found myself being um, being alone. We grew up together. We had fun like most other children did. But as um, time passed and some of them went off to college and some moved out of the home and got married or whatever, I found myself being even more lonely and um, not knowing what to do with myself and um, just feeling lost um, somewhat in life. But what helped me through it was my... My, um, the word, the word of God. I was always a, connected to the church, and I was always connected to the word of God. And I'm a person that loves words anyway. So what I would do when I was alone, when it seemed like everybody else was off doing something else, and and it was like, what about me? The, 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 do you see me? Sometimes you feel feel invisible, and and you you wonder if people really notice you. If 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 do they know who you are? And growing up with all of those siblings, like I said, as everybody went on to do, you know, to live their life, you find yourself so lonely. And I was I was lonely for a, a long time. But what I learned, what I what I love about it, and what I took from it is and learned from it was I got to really know who I am. And I, and I found it let me know what I really wanted to do in life because there was a time, especially in my 20s, where I really struggled with my, my identity. I didn't know who Candy was. I didn't know what Candy wanted to do. I didn't have a lot of um, 
uh, I'm not going to say guidance because I come from a very loving home and, and my mother, my mom was very supportive. Even though my father walked out when I was 10 years old, I, I found my, but as she, um, as we start growing old, older, she, she was more involved with the church and, and different things. So I found myself as, as a teenager and in my early to mid twenties being kind of alone, even, even though I had children and even though I was dating or even married, I, it, you still find yourself alone sometime. And I believe that's because you really just don't know who you are. And, and, and I know a lot of you out there, you don't know who you are and you don't know what you want to do and you feel so alone. So God told me to speak to that today. You do, it's okay to be alone. I want to let you know that it is okay to be by yourself and to be alone. I know I talk to different people um, that's married, and they are so alone even in their marriages. You have two people going two separate ways, and, and you're hurting. I talk to a lot of men, especially. It's ironic because it, it used, normally it will be the woman, the women. But And I talk to a few women also, but I talk to a lot of men that's really hurting, and their wives are, are not lining up. They're not doing this, and they're not doing that, or, or their wives are stepping out on them, and they're alone, and they don't know what to do. And because they're men, and men have a different pride than we do as females, they, they find themselves alone. So I speak to them, and I, I speak to that. You are okay being alone. Find out who you are and it's okay to be by yourself sometimes the reason a lot of us are in toxic relationships is because we refuse to be alone I know what it's like to continue dating one person after the next because you are afraid to be alone with yourself find out who you are learn your identity Find out what you want to do. And also, when you're alone, that's when God can speak to you. That's when you can sit and allow the Holy Spirit to just talk to you. And when he begins to speak to you and talk to you, he gives you direction. You can find out, where do I really want to be? Lord, is this who you have for me? If you're in a relationship, God, is this who you have for me? And you, have, and you can say, Lord, if it's not, move that person. But see, the truth be told, I would rather be alone than be with somebody that, that doesn't mean me any good. It's okay to be alone. Learn to be alone. I was reading in the book of John, I think it's John the sixth chapter, verse 66, where uh, Jesus told the other disciples that, you know, when, when some of the disciples turned away, uh, we, 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 we think about the 12 disciples, but what we don't realize is there were many followers of Jesus and some turned away. So listen, sometimes people are going to turn away from you. Everybody that start out with you are not going to remain with you. And you're going to be alone sometime. Sometimes you're going to have to walk alone. You have to go by yourself. There's a song that says, I'll go if I have to go by myself. It's okay to be alone. Being alone is so peaceful. Being alone is a peaceful place. And one thing we learned when we are alone is that you even make better decisions. I found that out. I make better decisions when I'm alone because, you know, if you're around, a lot of times when we're with other people, they're telling you what they would do or what they think you should do. But listen, when you're alone, you get to hear from yourself sometimes. You get to spend that time asking yourself, what do I really need to be doing? Where should I be going? God, show me my path. And then you begin to, be, to live your life on purpose. So as I grew up and I grew older, I learned that it was okay to be who I am. I did not have to be who people wanted me to be. I did not have to be what people wanted me to be. All I needed to be was who God made me to be. And that's why um, I, you know, I was sharing with um, you all before that I'm reading the book again. I read it years ago. I think it was written maybe 20 years ago, The Purpose Driven Life. So I was at the thrift store the other day. And I picked that book up again, and I started reading it again. And when you're alone, you really, really learn your purpose. You find out what your purpose is in life by spending time with you. A lot of time, it's the, I don't know why it is the hardest time, the hardest thing it is for us to do sometimes is to spend time with ourselves. I learned to love myself. I learned to not only love myself, but I like who Candy has become. I like the woman of God that he's raised me to be. So I introduce you to my guest today. My guest today, I am, I am a 56-year-old woman. God willing, I'll be 56 Thursday. April the 14th is my, I was born April 14th, 1966. I am the mother of five children. I had a daughter that passed away um, 10 years ago. I have 31 grandchildren. I am happily married and um, I am a business owner. I own a thrift store and a moving company, yours, mine, and ours. 
It's <clears throat> hauling, moving, and delivery, and yours, mine, and ours thrift store. And I am a pastor of Freedom Christian Assembly Worship Center. And um, I just love who I am. I love, and, and, and this came, um, me becoming the person that I am now, the entrepreneur, the woman of God that I am, <clears throat> the grandmother, the mother that I am, it came from spending time alone um, with God spending time alone with God. And so I love the path that God has me on today. So I speak to you out there, my listeners out there today. If you are alone, know that it's okay. God is with you. He said, I would never leave you nor forsake you. Learn to be okay being by yourself. Because a lot of times we're in, we're in the midst of people that don't mean us any good anyway. And when being alone, um, when you learn to be alone, God will start sending people. He'll send the people that you need to uphold you, to lift you up, and then and, and you'll feel their presence in a different way. It's okay to be alone. Stop being afraid. I know I've talked to um, a couple of men that has lost their wives, and you know they've shared with me how uh, lonely they are. And so I know a lot of times when we when we are alone, we pick up bad habits. We we may start eating more. And we may turn to alcohol and some to drugs or sex or whatever it is. We turn to many different things to fill that void, in the, in the, to fill that lonely space. But you do not have to do, need to do anything. Turn to God. God will fill every void in your life. That's why when the woman was at the well, and G, when Jesus met the woman at the well, he told her if she would drink of the water, his water, m- meaning that if she would um, drink of the word that she would never thirst again. See what happens when we're alone. We start, like I just said, filling ourselves with, with the wrong things. We turn to the wrong things to fill the empty void. But the thing is, the reality of that is the void is never fin- um, filled when we do that because those things, they're, they're only temporal, temporal and they're only moment, they're, they're momentarily. They don't last long. But when you fill your life, with God, with God's and, and God's word, when you fill your life with the re- building a relationship with God, you're okay being by yourself. I find myself wanting to be alone now. Um, I need that space, and I know in the Bible, Jesus would. And I think it's nine times in the, throughout the Gospels where Jesus went to be alone, and so he could talk to the Father. Sometimes you have to be alone so you can talk to the Father, and so the Father can talk back to you. Learn to be okay with yourself. There are people hurting because people have turned their back on you. They've, they've walked away from you. Listen, let them go. I preached a sermon, let it go. Now I'm telling you to let them go. Some people, you, are, you really need to just let go and be okay being alone until God fills that void. Being alone is a, a special place. It's a, it's a beautiful place, and it's a peaceful place. Learn to be okay. Step back. Do like Jesus did, still away. There's an old song that says, still away. Sometimes you need to just still away and be by yourself. Get in touch with who you are. Find out who you are. Locate yourself. When God asked Adam and Eve who they were, where they were, he knew where they were. He wanted them to locate themselves. So a lot of times the reason we're not okay being alone is because we have not located ourselves. We don't know who we are. We don't know where we are. Turn to Jesus. And ask God to fill you up. Fill my cup, Lord. Just lift yourself up to God. And God wants to pour into you today. But before he can pour into into you, God really needs to to, to rid you of some things. You are not alone today. God loves you so much. God has been holding you and, and, and comforting you and keeping you the whole time. He's been there all the time. I know you feel alone, but you are never. God said, I will never leave you. He said, I would never leave you. I would never forsake you. God is even faithful when we're faithless. I'm sorry, that's my phone ringing. But don't be afraid to be alone. Don't be afraid to be alone. I, um, I know I'm saying that word a lot because I'm a school teacher, and, and we learned that um, people learn better through repetition. So I, I, I may say my, you may hear me repeat myself a lot. Um, um, because I, I'm very adamant about it. Be, be okay being by yourself. Be okay being alone. And then for some of us who don't know God, maybe you need to go join some kind of support group. 
Maybe you need to meet up with them. If, if you're a woman and you're struggling with some things, find a women's group. If you're a man and you're going through some things, find a women's group. Maybe you can reach out to your pastor and ask him. Ask, maybe there's something you can do in the church to serve. You do not have to be alone. You do not have to sit alone. You do not have to walk alone. God is with you every step of the way. You are not alone. I was almost in tears um, thinking about how um, I felt when I was alone. So I'm very passionate about this subject. I remember just really being alone, and it seemed like nobody you know, was there for me. I, I, there was a, a time in my life and in a place where I was just alone. I felt like I had nobody. I felt like I you know, didn't have anything. I had nobody I could turn to. There was nobody that understood. Um, everybody only sat back and, and just and, and watched, and, and nobody ever just reached out to me. But I reach out to you today and let you know that you do not have to be alone. You don't have to be alone. I'm speaking to somebody out there today. Somebody out there is feeling so lonely they want to commit suicide. Don't do it. Some of you are stuck in a marriage that you know God has told you, listen, either one or two things, stay or go. Turn to God to fill that void, and, 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 and God will give you direction. Spend some time with God. We spend time doing everything else. Spend some time with God, and God will give you direction. And I, like I say, talk to him. Talk to God, and he'll begin to talk back to you. Ask God for what you need. This is how you fill the void. God, I need you, and I can't make it without you. Some of us, I, I know a lot, a lot of the young people, they get caught up in a lot of different things because they don't feel like they have anyone to turn to. And, 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 you, and you're changing what we call friends all the time, but everybody is not your friend. The Bible says, listen, a friend will stick closer than any brother. You are not alone. You do not have to be alone. Turn to God. Turn to God. I just cannot say that enough. Turn to God. Whatever your problem is, Jesus is the answer. Whatever your question is, Jesus is the answer. Jesus, listen, in the book of Matthew, the fifth chapter, he says, listen, he's, he, the, they're the Beatitudes. He said, listen, blessed are those that mourn. Blessed are the peacemaker." Blessed are you when you are reviled and people speak all manner of evil against you. And, 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 the, and, and what it's saying really is there's an attitude that we should have, that we need to have when we're going through. That's what helps us to heal. And that's what helps to fill that void where we are hurting, that empty space. I know what it's like to be empty and feel like you have nothing to give. It's, it's like you're on your last. Listen, you have no strength. You have no energy. I know what it's like to be empty. And to be alone and feel like, Lord, where do I go? Who do I turn to? And to feel like there's nobody there for me. I've been there on more than one occasion. But each time and every time I turn to God and he's waiting with open arms, he loves you so much. God is there to embrace you. Don't worry about people. Don't worry about people coming. People are going to come and go. But the Lord will remain. The only thing that we can really, really count on is God being there. If you're not standing on the word of God, you're standing on sinking sand. That is the only thing that's going to uphold you, not your money. Your money, listen, your money can't comfort you. It can't stop you from being alone. I know that's one thing I used to do, too. I used to shop a lot. I still shop a lot. God help me. I used to shop a lot to fill a void. And I would buy things. But I was still alone. I was still alone. You do not have to be alone. You do not have to feel like there's no one there for me. You don't have to feel like no one loves me. No one sees me. I'm here today to tell you that God sees you. He's omniscient. He's all-knowing. God is there for you. All you have to do is open up your mouth and start talking to him. He said, listen, I am just as close as the mention of my name. God is there. Listen, when you reach out in the midnight hour and you're feeling alone, God is there. You can pick up the phone and try to call people. They're, they may not answer. They may not be there because we're, we're flesh. We're human. But God, in the midnight hour... God is there. Listen, in the morning when you wake up and you can't sleep and, and you wake up to an empty house, God is there. When you wake up to an empty bed and you wish you had somebody lying next to you, God is there. You are not alone. You do not have to be alone today. Seek God while he may be found. He said, come. 
says, come. And I know a lot of us, a lot of us are tired. You know, you get tired of being alone. Being alone is a lonely place, but you're not alone. It's a lonely place, but you are not alone. God say, I'm here. He said, come unto me. You're tired. I, come, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. I want to give you rest. God want to give you rest from your worry. From your, a lot of people have the fear of being alone. A lot of us stay in relationships. We're at churches that, that God has told us to leave 20, 30 years ago because we don't want to be alone. We don't want to be separated from something. We have pastors that's, that's, that's married and they're, they're running churches and they, they have a good word, they preach good, but they're alone. I'm writing a poem now and, it, and it's, part of it is, who, who preaches to the preacher? Who does the pastor turn to? Who teaches the teacher? T.D. Jakes wrote, wrote a book a while back that said the teacher goes back to school. So sometimes in, in order to fill a void, we need to go back to what we know, and that's God. The Bible says return to your first love. Our first love is God. God loves us so much that he did what? John 3.16 said God loves you so much that he, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever Whosoever, black, white, blue, purple, fat, skinny, long hair, short hair, no, weave, no, whatever. God says, God loves you so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, whosoever, whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have an, ever, have an everlasting life. Listen, turn to God in your loneliness. He is right there waiting on you with open arms, with loving arms, ready to carry you and hold you. Listen, whatever you're going through, you are not alone. The Bible says, if I made my bed in hell, behold, he's there. If I had the wings of a dove and flew to the utmost parts of the earth, God is there. God is everywhere you are, but it's up to you to receive him. Turn to God in your loneliness. Turn to God in your loneliness. We can't always pick up the phone and call somebody. I know for a long time, like I said, I'm vulnerable. I don't mind sharing me with you. There were many a times that I, I turned to God and I said, Lord, I don't have anyone to talk to. And it took a young lady, one of my customers, to say, some of us just have to go directly to the throne. So I spend, my, I spend a lot of time in God's face when I don't have anyone else to turn to. But you can do the same thing. Turn to God. Everybody don't always have the right answer. You don't have to be alone, whether you are alone or whether you're in the midst of a bunch of people, whether you and a, a lot of us are at churches and we're still alone. We're, we're getting nothing from it. We, we're still lonely. We say, Lord, I, I go to church. I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. I'm giving. I'm, I'm helping people. I'm taking care of people. But you still feel alone. It's still, it's still something about you. It's there, there's still a, an empty space inside of you. God said, it's me. See, we spend, we, we, busy is good. But busy is not always God. It's a difference in a good thing and a God thing. We can stay busy working for the church and we, we, we on the usher board and we can, we can be on the deacon board and all of these different in the choir, on the praise team, and, and we can do everything just right. Why? Because the gifts come without repentance. But a lot of us are still alone, even though we are part of something so great. So don't let your labor be in vain. If you don't have a relationship with God, develop a relationship with God. That's why we are still empty as church folk. We, we're going to church and we're doing all of this singing and praising and preaching, but we're still alone. Why? Because we really don't have an intimate relationship with God. That's the missing ingredient. You can do church all day, but you find yourself still alone for some reason. God say, I'm the missing ingredient. I want a relationship with you. I want an intimate relationship with you. I want you to spend more time with me. Listen, God loves you. You are not alone. You are not alone. I see somebody crying in tears. You've been crying. You've just been going through. It's been heavy on you. You've been in this place for way too long. God says, all you have to do is come unto me. I want to give you rest. You are not alone. God says, I got this. And remember this, get by yourself. I want you to get by yourself, whoever I'm talking to, whoever this word is for, whoever receives it. Get by yourself and spend some time with God. 
God wants to hear from you. And God also wants you to hear from him. But you cannot hear from him if you don't get in that quiet, long space. I'm married. I love my husband. But sometimes I'm happy if he's upstairs watching TV and I may be downstairs or vice versa. Sometimes I'm, I'm okay, go see your brother or go visit somebody. He's going to laugh when he hears this. But sometimes you have to be alone by yourself. Get by yourself so God can speak to you. Put the kids to bed and get, spend some alone time with God. Turn the TV off. Turn the cell phone off and spend some time with God. God, has, God wants to speak to you. God wants to talk to you. God wants to commune with you. Shut, shut some things down. Stay in the house today and just spend a couple of hours with God. Don't be afraid to be alone. If you're in a toxic relationship with a boyfriend or something and he's hurting you and he's not doing right by you, don't be afraid to, to leave. It's okay to be alone. And you know what? If you don't learn to be alone, you can't get to where God wants you to be anyway. Because you're occupying that space with the wrong thing. So God wants you to empty out. He wants you to get rid of whatever is toxic and whoever toxic so he can, he can pour into you today. It's okay to be alone. It's okay to be alone. And I smile when I say that because, I, like I said, I struggled with being alone for a long time. But I thank God. For that alone, when I learned to be alone, and, and I learned that it was okay to be by myself, I didn't always have to have someone um, with me, or I didn't always have to be around somebody. When I learned that, when I found that out, and, and, and God began to, to speak to me, and, and to, the Holy Spirit began to teach me, and, and, and I sit here today, all praises be to God, just happy to be alone sometimes. It's peace in it. It's so much peace and solitude. And being alone, it, is so, it brings so much joy to my life. Just being alone, spending some quality time with God. That's my word for today. Do not be afraid of being alone. It's okay. It's okay. Tell yourself, it's okay. I'm going to spend some time by myself today. I'm not going to call anyone today. I'm not going to talk on the phone. I know it's hard for a lot of people with small strides. Small. Take it, take it slow. But learn to be okay with yourself. And learning to be okay with yourself means learning to like yourself. A lot of times we don't want to spend time by ourselves because we don't like who we are. We have to really face who we are. And sometimes facing who you are and dealing with who we are is not a, 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 a pretty sight. But listen, you can bring it all together. I don't care how ugly you think it is or how bad you think it is to, or how hard it is to look at yourself. Being alone will help you through that. And you'll learn, to, wait a minute, I'm not so bad. I like me. And wherever I'm at, I can grow from there. Spend some time with God. Spend some alone time with God. Get more involved with God's word. Get into his word. Don't just go to church and be doing church. Don't, don't let what you do be in vain. Sure, you have a gift to sing. You have a gift to pray and preach and, and do all of these different things, but you don't have to be alone doing it. Some of us just do, we, we, we're, we're joyful in front of people, but when we get by ourselves, we're so alone. And in, 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 in church, we're alone. Some of you are sitting in church lonely because you don't know where to turn or to whom to turn to. You do not have to be alone. God say, I am with you. I am with you. No matter where you are, no matter what you're going through, I am with you. Listen, until next time here, on let's talk about it. Um, before we close out, I, I need to say this real quick. So the whole month of May, I want to make this announcement, we'll be dealing with women. We'll be Since it's Mother's Day is in May, we're going to be talking about women all the month of May. And then June, it'll be the same thing um, with fathers. We're gonna be, it's going to be a man, a man month. We're going to be talking about men all month. But listen, until next time here, don't trust the process, KAZ Radio. If you're going to trust God, then trust the process. It's okay to be alone.